that's a thing I do that drives a girlfriend nuts. I'll, I'll, um, she'll ask, she'll comment on something or make a statement about something, then I'll, I'll comment it on it, but not until like 30 seconds later, you know, because I'm like right in the middle of doing something whenever she talks to me, because she never talks to me while I'm just sitting here not doing anything. It's always when I'm right in the middle of doing something. But then after I'm done doing what I'm doing, I, you know, I've got that sitting in the back of my head, the thing that she just said. Then I'll respond to what she just said, and it infuriates her, because she's forgotten all about it by that point. <laughs> No, I didn't hear about one. Or are you being serious or is this another Kenshiro joke? <laughs> Can never tell when you're being serious. No, well then fill us in dish. Things let's face it, Ebola's starting to get a little boring. We need a new plague. Oh, I will have to poke into that after the uh, stream ends. No, terrorism is... People are getting desensitized to it. They're not even batting an eye at terrorism anymore. Oh, look, another terrorist attack. Another truck of peace. Even the shooting at the church barely batted an eye. Although they're not going to talk about any of those shootings because it's not who they want it to be. They're just clam chomping at the bit for good old boy shooting. <laughs> good old redneck Republican get her done. But it's not going to happen. How can we push for gun control when it's always liberals that are shooting people? Progressives, sorry. Progressives. It is. It is. As long as there's resources, there's going to be people fighting over those resources. Utopia is a pipe dream reserved for Star Trek. Even in the Star Trek universe, it's got Klingons and Romulans. People are hungry. Yeah, because there's not enough food to feed them or they're too stupid to grow it themselves. Of course they're going to be hungry. Solutions are too distasteful. Too unpleasant to think about. Despite how necessary they may be. Most, most of these problems that the world is facing right now are self-correcting. You're, you're exactly right. You let them go long enough, they will fix themselves. You stop meddling and just let the problem correct itself, it will. And that's a shame. I wish more politicians would do nothing. I'm going to do absolutely nothing for the next four years. You got my vote. <laughs> You're elected. I'm going to veto everything. No, no, it, it, it'll stabilize. It will. It'll, it'll stabilize. Um, we'll find a balance. Nope. Nope, our turn will come. And it won't be as a result of a catastrophic incident. It'll be a result of sheer stupidity. <laughs> yeah, Slick Willie would have enjoyed that, wouldn't he? He would have been happy as a clam if we did that. Hookers and Coke, shoot, yeah, sign me up for another four years. 
I mean, humanity is pretty resilient. We can survive a lot, a lot of stuff. We can survive, survive in a lot of environments. Uh, you know, from the frozen north to the uh, to the equator. You know, but we can't survive our own stupidity. My favorite example of that is Zimbabwe. They wanted to take their country back, which is admirable. You know. It's admirable, but before you try to take your country back, make sure that you know how to manage your country. So they kicked out all the farmers, took all the land back for, for the Zimbabweans, and uh, two years, two years it took them. Drought, famine, pestilence, the whole nine yards. People dying in the streets because nobody knew how to run a farm. And then they came begging to us. We need help. We need help. We need help. We're dying. Our people are starving. Well, no shit, Sherlock, because none of you know how to freaking plant a goddamn crop. Unless you got somebody telling you how to do it. Read a book. <laughs> Google it. Same thing's happening here in the United States. There's all these um, movements to, you know, and I'm not trying to like make this a whitey thing. I'm just trying to make this a stupid thing. You know, white man's the problem. White male privilege. White. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So let's say you get rid of us. Let's say you get rid of us tomorrow. What? What then? There's nobody left to pay your taxes. There's nobody left to run the businesses. There's nobody left to give you jobs. Within a year, you're all going to be starving to death because none of you have survival skills. Not a one. There, there was a. Um, and again, I'm not trying to get racial here. I'm just trying. This isn't a racial thing. This is a stupid thing. Uh, it was a Black Lives Matter meeting. And a member of Black Lives Matter was speaking in front of the group and said, let's say you did achieve your goal. Let's say you did manage to decimate Whitey. You took the country over and you owned it tomorrow. Uh, let's make that assumption. What then? Within a year, you're all going to be murdering each other because not a single one of you knows how to plant a crop, fix your own damn car, fill out a job application. None of these things that are required to survive in society. Not a one. None of you have these skills because you're all dependent on white on the white man that you're trying to kill for your welfare, for your jobs, for whatever. You're all dependent on him. And without him, you can't function because you've never developed those skills because you're lazy. Mind you, this was a member of Black Lives Matter saying this to these people. They booed him and escorted him out of the building. <laughs> Now, I'm not trying to like make this a racial thing. I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm just trying to show you the stupidity of the movements themselves, you know, the progressive movement in general. A bunch of people complaining about the 1%, and the people that are paying for their protests are members of the 1%, uh, the extreme members of the 1%, the 1% of the 1%. I just pointed that one example out because it's the one that always sticks in my head about how stupid these movements are. When you know when it comes to the reality of the situation, and the reality of the situation is, you're all dependent on the very people that you're protesting against. You're all beholden to the very same people that you want to destroy. It's being manipulated and used. It's slavery. It's modern day slavery. We can't keep you on the plantation. We'll keep you in the welfare office. Yeah, it doesn't matter one way or the other. And it's the same freaking people that are doing it. Same freaking people. Yeah, you don't get paid to go to church. <laughs> That's why it's easier, though. You don't get paid to go to church. Even. Church requires effort. Faith requires effort. What they're doing requires zero effort. You stay home, you collect a check. It was, though it was. I, I don't know if you're old enough to remember it, but it was. There, that, that problem was gone. It was completely gone. There were still a few, you know, get her duns and whatnot that um, still felt that way, but it wasn't a movement anymore. It wasn't an organized drive. Um, it was, it was gone because nobody had time for it. You know, during uh, during that time period when we had that major boom in the United States, people were too busy making money to worry about things like that. Nobody had time for it. <clears throat> it was it was not cost effective anymore.
well, wait a minute, people are starting to get along again. People are not hating one another anymore. Can't have that. That doesn't fit the agenda. So let's stir the pot. But, yeah. But it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. And that's kind of one of those things I was talking about last night where you, you kind of get mired down in the details. Um, and, and that's a part of it. That's part of it by design. You get mired down in the details and you uh, fail to see the larger picture. You fail to take that one step further. Okay, yeah, these people are acting like this, but why are these people acting like this? Because this person's telling them to. Okay, but who's telling that person to tell these people to do? You got to keep going up the chain because you can't, you're not going to fix the problem by treating the, the symptoms. You have to go right to the source. Well, I, get, I get irritated with these arguments about um, you know progressivism and feminism and racial issues and whatnot uh, because there's no point. There's no point in arguing them. There's no point in having the discussions because you're not. Neither side is going to change the opinion of the other. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Believe me, I, I am not privileged. <laughs> you know, every time I have to go to a child support hearing, there's no privilege there because there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I'm completely powerless to do anything about that. If I try to fight that, I go to jail. Plain and simple. That, that's not privilege. White privilege is really what, what what they consider white privilege is having to go to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week taking 20% of all those earnings and just handing them over to the government. That's white privilege. Uh, he's uh, 12. He's 12. Yeah, yeah, basically, though. Well, I, I can't really complain. Um, she, I, I'm not being raked over the coals that hard. I was just using that as an example. Um, even though... It's a very acceptable amount. It's still a mandatory amount. You know what I mean? I don't have it as hard as many people do. <laughs> yeah, I don't. And I'm not. I don't complain about it anyhow. Even if my payments were higher, I wouldn't complain about it because it's my responsibility. You decided to engage in an activity, Dolo, that would create a child. Okay. Ergo, you accept the responsibility of said child should one be created, period. If, if the union of the mother and father somehow dissolves at a later, later date, you're still responsible for that child. Uh, I don't, I can't really agree because um, you both engage in that activity. Willingly, not not under any form of duress. That's irrelevant. How the money is spent is irrelevant. If she spends the um, money that I sent to her on a, a child support payment, then that frees up her money to be spent on something else, you know, for the child. How that specific batch money doesn't matter, or how it's used, it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant. That's one of those little details that kind of what I was talking about can bog people down. What she does with that check is irrelevant. It, it, add it to the, her monthly pool. And that's how you have to view it. That's part of her monthly pool. And half of that child's existence is my responsibility. And that's how you have to view it. What do you mean? He's getting food, he's getting clothing, he's getting shelter. That's the benefit of that money. If he has a place to live, food in his belly, and clothes on his back, he's getting the benefit of that money. Anything else is extra. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't like the way the system is enforced. That's my problem with that particular system. But I don't have uh, an issue with the fact that, you know, that's your responsibility. Well, it, the amount that you pay is reflected upon the amount you can afford. They can, they're only allowed to legally take so much. Now, granted, some people get gouged pretty hard, but that's because they're stupid. Um, that has nothing to do with, you know, an unfair system. That has everything to do with stupid fathers. You were stupid for getting a woman pregnant in the first place. That's your punishment for it. But, yeah, you can't even view it as that. Uh, it's just...
it's hard for, harder for a guy. I'm not going to deny that because that's the way the system is set up. Uh, once you start going through the office itself, and if you go through a private arrangement, then none of that bears any relevance. You know what, Dolo? They won't. And I can tell you that from experience. If I, if I was given the choice to not pay child support, I wouldn't. Not because I don't want to, but because I just don't think about it. Because the kid's not here. You know what I mean? Out of sight, out of mind. It's one of those things. Um, I have more immediate expense right now. So, a lot of fathers, a lot of them, the, I'd say the vast majority of them, need to be told to pay their child support. They really do. Um, not be, And it has nothing to do with them not wanting to take care of their children or their responsibilities or anything like that. It's just because, you know, when a child doesn't live with you, you tend to forget about them. And that's, that's just the cold hard truth. Um, they're not part of your day-to-day -day pro program. They're not part of your normal system. They'd go to jail. Well, he wouldn't die, but he would do without. Uh, there's possible. Uh, there's a distinct possibility that um, you know the cost of raising the child would, plus the cost of maintaining a home, would be too much for the mother to um, maintain. Uh, my problem isn't with the the paying of the support. My problem is this with the system of enforcement. But they have to enforce it somehow. There has to be some form of enforcement for those fathers that absolutely refuse to pay it. It's not that other man's responsibility. Dolo, it's not his responsibility. He didn't have that kid. You did. <laughs> it's your responsibility. You engaged in the act. You created the child. Your responsibility. The mother isn't really part of the equation anymore because you're not in a relationship with the mother. The responsibility is to the child, not to the mother. No, it's because you're still thinking about it as a separate unit of income, Dolo. And you can't think about it that way. You have to think about it as part of the whole. And it, it, it's irritating. It's irritating, especially when your ex is like a shrew or something like that. Just some miserable, horrible, because you just don't want her to be happy. You know, because she, she made you so miserable for so long. Um, but you have to get beyond that, because it's not about her. It's not about her. It's not about you. It's about the kid. No, he does not. He absolutely does not. He's not marrying the kids. He's marrying the woman. He has no responsibility for those children whatsoever. Um, I totally disagree with that. If he agrees to take on that kind of responsibility when the child's father's like a deadbeat or something, you know, that's admirable. But he has no requirement. He has no responsibility to do so. He has the option to do so. But he doesn't have the responsibility to do so. Because he's not marrying the children, he's marrying the woman. He's accepting the fact that the woman has the children, but he's not accepting the fact that they're now his responsibility. Because they're not. That doesn't mean to say that he doesn't have the option to take on that responsibility. You know, should the, the situation require it, should he desire it, whichever, it doesn't matter. But no, the, the responsibility for that child is belongs to the two people that created that child, period. They both engaged in a willing act under no duress. They knew the risks. They knew the ramifications. That's the consequence. Choices, consequences. <laughs> I've been doing this for 25 years, and it took me a while to get used to the idea. Um, and I, I, I still get irritated by it, uh, with the whole child support thing. I still get irritated by it. Um, but it became much easier for me to deal with once I got over myself. Once I start being such a selfish prick all the time. Because uh, it's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about the kid. Be right back. I need a drink. <clears throat> you guys make me talk too much. <laughs>
There's no such thing as accidental pregnancy except for in cases of rape. Every time you engage in, in, in sex, every, every single time, there's a chance. Regardless of all precautions taken, if she's on the pill, you're wearing a condom, it doesn't matter. Even if you pull out, you know, none of these things are guarantees. Yeah, it, still, it would still be his responsibility because he engaged in the initial act. The privilege of choice isn't, isn't even relevant in this situation because they both willingly engaged in the act. The man agreed to engage in the act, period. That, that's, where, that's where it stops. Once you agree to engage in the act, you agree to all consequences of said act, period. If you don't want to get a woman pregnant, don't have sex with her. It's that simple. Oh, alimony is a completely different story, Kenshiro. That's completely different. <laughs> I'm not talking about alimony. Well, I, no, alimony is an outdated concept. Well, it was created at a time when women didn't have the opportunities to uh, earn, earn an income, earn a living. But those days are long, long gone. We have equality now. <laughs> women can do anything a man can do. They can hold any position within a company. They can earn a living. They have every single opportunity that the man has, regardless of what you're being told. So there's no need for alimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't because it's your child. You know, it's hard sometimes. It, it's it's rough sometimes, especially when you know, like your ex is it's a, it's a horrible, wretched shrew. Yeah, it's, it's the enforcement that I don't like, the enforcement of child support. But there has to be some form of enforcement and until we can establish a better system. That's really all the best the best we have to work with because there are a lot of fathers out there that just flat out refuse to pay um, for their responsibilities. And it's creating a hell of a burden on the system. You know, that's what the deadbeat dads want to make it, though. They want to make it society's responsibility because they don't want to take responsibility for their own actions. Which brings us back to, <laughs> you know, you need you need the rules in place. The, and, and, you know, as much as I'm anti-establishment, as much as I'm anti-rule, you need some something in place. Or you're just going to have people going around screwing willy-nilly, creating all these offspring that nobody wants to pay for. Well, somebody's going to have to pay for them. They become a burden on society. So there has to be some system in place to to oversee that, to make sure that doesn't happen. But it starts with just creating a strong family unit in the first place. If you have a strong family unit in the first place, then you don't have to worry about all those other things. It's when you create a weakening of the family unit, the nuclear family, that these problems start to arise, which is what we're facing right now, the destruction of the nuclear family. It's easy to blame the woman. It really is. Uh, we've gotten comfortable with that in these child support situations and these divorce situations. But the man has just as much responsibility and just as much culpability as the woman does. Because it's a 50-50 deal. Yeah, you do. No, abstinence. Not vasectomy. Because even a vasectomy is a 100% guarantee. Abstinence. If you don't want the kid, don't have sex. Period. <laughs> it's the only way. The only way. <clears throat> if you're not willing to accept that responsibility, don't engage in that action. <clears throat> if you're not willing to accept the risk of falling off a cliff, don't climb up the mountain. Um, that's really all it is in a nutshell. I don't expect people to agree with everything I say. I don't. Everybody has their own opinions, their own thoughts. Um, but you can't come to a common consensus unless everybody can say those, those opinions and thoughts. Mm -hmm.